Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new, my name is Chloe. Thank you for joining me today. Um, please hit that subscribe button below if you have not done so already. Hit the notification bell. Like my videos, comment, share, all that, all that stuff that every YouTuber says, right? So today, no sling. <laughs> um, I am able to move my arm a little bit. I uh, just wanted to kind of give you an update as to what's going on. I know my hair is blowing on the fan. Um, it is kind of chilly out today, but it's warm in my room. I don't know why, but um, I mean, we don't have the heater on too high. But in any case, uh, just wanted to catch you guys up on what's been going on with me this past week and why I haven't uploaded a new presidential highlights video. First of all, I can't write very well. I am a right-hander, and so uh, to write everything out will aggravate my arm even further. Um, I do still have a few more days of FDR, but I just haven't felt up to doing another video about it. And John, I did get your comment. I know I haven't, uh, I haven't hearted it yet because I haven't been on my computer. The weird thing is, is I can get onto YouTube on my phone, but it has me signed in under my real name, and I can't figure out how to switch it to my Chloe name, because every time I try, it's saying that it's unrecognizable. So when I'm doing my Chloe stuff, like when I heart your videos and when I upload video or your comments rather, and I upload my videos, I have to do it on my computer because that's where I can sign into my Chloe got LB40 account. So that is why I I've been seeing the comments. I just can't heart them on my phone, which is weird. So what I've been doing? Well, I've been taking a lot of this <laughs> pain medication is a generic form of Tylenol. I did get a prescription of oxycodone, which yes, it is a narcotic, and yes, it is addictive of what I've been told. I got 10 pills, I've only taken two out of the bottle, plus the one I had on Sunday when I went to the ER. So since Sunday, I've only taken three oxycodone. Uh, I have been taking the pain pain reliever medication more than the oxycodone because the oxycodone wipes me out and so I did take one last night because I've been finding it very uncomfortable to lay down in my bed and sleep because of the pain in my arm. It was like up in here but now it's moved down more into the muscle area so I can like, if I go sideways, I can go up. It's starting to hurt right here. I can go up to about here, but if I try to go forward, I can only get to about here. So, um, I'm at about 70% better. Uh, for any of you that have been praying for me, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Keep the prayers coming. We're still working on it. Um, one of the things that I was told that I have to do is, or that I should do, is when I'm standing up, I need to, like, do, like, arm bends at my elbow, and so I can do that, and then when I stand up, I have to kind of, like, lean over and let my arm hang down and kind of swing it in a pendulum style. I can get pretty, pretty wide circles on that, but then after I do it for a couple minutes, then my arm tends to hurt more, so, um... I'm slowly working things out with my arm. Uh, it is very difficult to do certain things with just my left hand, because like I said, I'm a right-hander. Showering is not easy. Uh, washing my hair with one hand, because I can't quite get, like I can't lift my arm up to my, I mean, it looks like I can here, but it's kind of hurting. Um, but I can't really get this side of my hair <laughs> washed really well with one hand. Uh, eating is a challenge. Um, what else? Writing, I can write a little bit with my right hand, but I don't push it too much. Drinking is fine. Um, I do have my water here, so if you'll excuse me a second, my throat's getting dry. 
drinking, it doesn't matter because you can drink with either right or left hand. So I can do that. That's not a problem. But sleeping, showering, eating, that kind of thing is... And getting dressed is kind of a challenge too. But the way I look at it is if Bethany Hamilton had to relearn how to do everything after she lost her arm to a shark attack... Uh, including going back on a surfboard, I'll tell you about her in a second, I figure I can do it too. So for those of you who don't know who Bethany Hamilton is, there was a movie made about her called Soul Searcher, and, or Soul Surfer, excuse me, and it starred Dennis Quaid as her, as her dad, and she went out, she lives in Hawaii, I believe, and she went out, um, she was a champion surfer, and she went out one day with her friends just to have fun and, and surf in the waves and stuff. And as she was, you know, paddling on her, on her surfboard out, a shark came and bit her, her arm off. So she doesn't have an arm. I think it's her left arm. I think it's her left arm. Um, so she had to learn how to do everything all over again. And so I figure if she can do it with one arm, so can I. So... Getting dressed is a little bit of a challenge. I have to put on my right arm uh, sleeve first, and then I kind of put my head through the through the head hole and then kind of snake my left arm through. Um, I'm getting better at putting my pants on and stuff like that because, you know, if I bend my arm a certain way to pull my pants up all the way, then it kind of hurts my arm, so I kind of have to do it slowly. Um, and I'm slowly getting used to putting my socks on with one hand, too. But um, I have not been outdoor dashing since this happened. I am not comfortable doing it yet because my shifter is on the floor of my car. And so I would have to use a lot of pressure to shift the car. And if I had to do an evasive maneuver really quickly... Um, I might re-injure my arm if I have to grab the wheel really quick and without thinking, and that could re-injure my arm. So I'm taking some time off. Not that the doctor said I couldn't drive, but I just don't feel comfortable with driving. And sure, I could reach over with my left hand, but that's kind of, you know, strange to do that. So um, for the time being, I'm not driving anywhere. If I have to go somewhere that re that involves a car, I have Sea Dog pick, uh, drive me to places. Or, like, I live right in front of a strip mall, so I can just walk to the strip mall and go and get some stuff at the store if I need to. But, um, yeah, so I haven't driven at all this week. And that's fine, because it's been kind of rainy and it's getting a little bit colder again. So, April showers bring me flowers, right? So, I just wanted to catch you guys up on that stuff. And thank you all for... Um, supporting me all this, all these years and stuff like that. Hopefully, once I am back at it, I can go back to doing my uh, Adventures with Chloe uh, videos again. I'm sure that you guys are all anxious to see me do that. There are a couple places um, that I'd like to go. They're not very close to here, but we've had some famous people that were born here in Minnesota. And one of them happens to be someone by the name of Frances Gum, which I'm sure you probably have never heard that name if you don't know who she is. And the other one was Laura Ingalls Wilder. And she, there's a museum out west of here, maybe about an hour to two hours away from where I live, um, that I wanted to go and see. And so I might, you know, once my arm gets better and hopefully it's before I make my trip to Southern California, um, my my goal date for that is June 30th, or to leave here on July 1st, actually. So things are starting to look okay. Um, once I can get back to door dashing, I can keep building up my bank account and being able to do that. I've already got the pods already set up. So I plan on having pods move me, and then I'll just drive my car, maybe with Silver Mist helping me, um, or Star Shadow, whatever, and so Francis Gum, 
She was later known as Judy Garland, and she was born in Grand Rapids, Minnesota, I want to say. Grand, Grand Rapids or Grand Marais, somewhere way up north, uh, northern Minnesota. And I'm sure that they have, like, her, her childhood home, maybe as a museum or something. I haven't looked that up, but I would love to go and see that, too. Uh, a lot of stars from the 40s and 50s, uh, especially the females, had to change their names. So, like, who you know as Marilyn Monroe was actually born Norma Jean Mortensen. Uh, Judy Garland was Frances Gum, G-U-M-M. -M. Uh, she started out as a vaudeville singer, actually, before she got into movies and, and became a professional singer and stuff with her sisters. And doing the vaudeville with her sisters, rather. Uh, there was actually a film that was done in the 1970s, late 1970s, called Rainbow. Uh, it starred Andrea McCardle. I'm sure you can probably find it on YouTube. And it talks about Judy Garland's life up until she was cast at, in um, Wizard of Oz. So you can, you can watch that. It's really quite an interesting show. So, I'm going to go ahead and go back to resting. What I've been doing this past week is I've been watching, trying to catch up on the Derek Chauvin, tri Chauvin trial. And um, playing a lot of happy color <laughs> when I can with my arm. Um, so, I've basically been sitting in bed all the time. So And like I said, it was hard for me to lay down in my bed without it hurting my arm. So, I've literally been sitting up against that wall, sleeping, sitting up, because that's the only way I can get comfortable with my arm. So hopefully it won't be too much longer where I don't have to take an Oxy before I go to bed. And I just did that last night for the first time, and I was able to sleep pretty good. So anyway, I hope you guys are having a glorious day. Uh, hope you guys are all staying safe. And if you have any questions about the Derek Chauvin trial, Go ahead and ask me. I do not like the defense attorney. Uh, he's a lot better than the um, prosecuting attorney from the Jody Arias trial in the fact that he's very respectable. But I don't like that he keeps pushing the the drug issue. Like the way I under you know the way I'm taking it is that he feels like George Floyd deserved to die because he was on drugs. I mean, I know he's trying to get his client off and everything, and I really hope that the jury finds him guilty. At this point, I think it's not so much a, a matter of finding him guilty. I think it's just which charge are they going to convict him of, the third-degree murder or the second-degree manslaughter, and how long he'll be in jail for. I, don't, I really don't think he's going to get off with all the evidence that's out there. Yeah. Even all the police officers, including what I'm told, the chief of police of Minneapolis, John Elder, it are all testifying against Chauvin. So, and I find it funny that they that his name is pronounced Chauvin, as in chauvinist. Uh, yeah. So, um, so I've been kind of trying to catch up on that. I'm on day 8 now, and I think we just finished day 10 or 11, something like that. So I'm slowly catching up. And so I guess it's a ghost town downtown right now. Uh, a lot of media, but a lot of police as well, because they don't want any incidents down there. I have no idea how long it's going to last. Hopefully it won't be very long, and hopefully they will convict him and there won't be riots like there were last year. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and let you go. Um, so stay tuned. I will do another FDR video. I'm just not sure when. I'm still relaxing my arms. So thank you, John, for your, for your comment. Yes, I am. I am resting. So hopefully I'll see you one of these days. <laughs> I keep going into where you work, but you're never there. So anyway, give me a text or whatever. Let me know how things are going with you. And we will talk with you guys on the next one. Have a sunny day.